I remember in, in one of our previous discussions that you're mentioning um, how you see your function, in so many ways, I'm paraphrasing what you said, but essentially you see yourself, one of your functions as being an ambassador between the jinn realm and the human realm, insofar, if I'm understanding you correctly, insofar as there's a lot of, um, there are a lot of min misconceptions that people have vis-a-vis -vis the jinn realms and the jinns, and there are a lot of abuses that are done towards them and against them. And, and you see, which I think it really was an eye opener when you put it to me like this. And I really loved what you said, that you see, see yourself as an ambassador for, for them as a human being to say, look, we can't keep doing this shit to them. Like, because mm -hmm. they, I mean, we, we talk about, as we should, right, it, 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 about taking care of the natural world and, 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 and you know, being stewards of the natural world. But mm -hmm. At the same time, which is absolutely our, our responsibility, a huge responsibility, right? Not a small thing by any means. If, if, if we are in, again, this is within this Islamic cosmological framework, right? If we are created as God's vice chairs, right? As, as Khalifas of God, each and every one of us, right? It's not each just, and every one of it's us. Not just a Khalif at the head of the Islamic state. It's each and every one of us is a Khalif in his or her own right, we are God's representative on earth. We're a bridge between heaven and earth. If that's the case, and we are supposedly in potential, right? We have to realize that we're not there yet, all of us. I mean, some of us- Yes. Are <laughs> but we're potentially, right? Um, um, what's the word? We're God's caliphs and we are, we are, we are bridges between heavens. And therefore, you know, the, the sort of the, um, the mevlavis in their twirling right the, the symbolism is you know it's literally the grace coming from from the heavens and and we're spreading that grace into the earth right so also if we're god's chemist we have responsibility to the jinn world right again reminding ourselves of that famous very important verse that god right god did not create mankind nor did except that we worship him if mm -hmm. we are supposedly the crown of creation we have a responsibility to be respectful and honorable and conscientious of that mm -hmm. realm and not just in some fearful oh my god did, so could you that was a huge eye-opener for me huge when you said that and when you said vice regions you literally took the words out of my mouth um and those are god's words they're not ours so this is a very important concept that people don't understand most people who don't believe in God, their argument is, well, if God exists, why is there so much war in the world? Why is there famine? Why is there so much suffering and death and this? And why are there all these crimes committing? Well, yes, because God put that world into your trust. We are the ones creating famines. We are the ones going to war. We are the ones killing each other. So you have to accept, it's not just the fact that God raised you, right? Is that he gave you a responsibility over this world. So what are you doing with it? He gave you this infinite potential. We have to understand that we are different than angels and jinns in the fact that our essence is divine. Right? Our essence, the soul that we have is divine. But he put it into this clay mold, which everyone frowns upon. Angels and gems. See, people, they think that angels, they're so nice and they're so wonderful and they, you know, they're, they're kind of like our toys to play with. No, that's not true. Angels actually say us, see us in a very negative light. And you can see it even in the dialogue where, where God says, they're like, oh God. Because everyone was expecting themselves to be the Khalifas of the earth. Because this is one of the most beautiful planets, you know, it has, um, it, it's just beautiful, all the resources that are available. It's really like the, the best place to be. It's the best area code within the cosmos, right? So they're expecting when he says, I'm going to make a vice region. The angels are like, well, he's going to make us. And of course, you know, Iblis, he's going to be, well, he's going to make me. I've, I've worshipped him all over the place. And then he says, no, it's this guy, this new guy here. You know, and then well, the, the angels, they're like, hey, we're, we're, we're glorifying you. We're praising you day and night. And you're going to make these people who are, you know, who are going to shed blood and corrupt the earth. Because the gens were there before and that's what they were doing. 
right? We have to remember that the gens were on earth before us. So we came into their turf. This is something very important. So this is not just the fact that, oh, okay, we'll rise regions, we're, we're the crown of creation, but we have the crown of responsibility as well. We have to show not just jinns, but angels, that we are worthy of this place that God has placed us in. And that's, that's what the devil said. He says, you know what? I'll show you. Just give me time. Extend my life, please. Because he prayed for it, right? Let's remember, after he, after he disbelieved and was cast to, 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 uh, to hell, he still prayed for it. So please, guys, remember that the devil still prays to God. <laughs> he says, just give me time and I'll show you they're not worth it. He says, okay, you can go and you can. He says, okay, I will come from front and center and back and I will tempt them and I will show you. This is the bet. This is the wager that they have going together. Now, of course, look at what we're doing between human beings. Look at what we're you know, the suffering we're imposing on each other between races, between colors, between ethnicities. Now imagine going one step further between jinns and human beings, which are not even the same race of beings, right? And this fear, this xenophobia goes both ways. It's not just us who are afraid of the jinns, but they are as much worried from us and by us as we are by them. With the right knowledge, it's very easy for a human being to kill a jinn. With the right knowledge, it's very easy for a human being to imprison him, to burn him or her, or do whatever they want. You know, with the right knowledge, and when God puts that power in your hands, but that, and that's what most magicians do, threaten, burn, imprison. Many jinns who are in charge of evil magic. I, I just, I just thought of this, you know, Monsters Inc. You know, I, you know, it, the monsters are scared of the little child. Right? They are scared of the little child. And how much truth is there? Because the child goes into the other dimension, yeah. and they have this very, very. They have their own fears. They have this stuff, the Hollywood stuff. I mean, there, there's a huge reality to it. These people are not pulling stuff out of their hats. They're, they have this huge organization and they have objectives and, you know, the, the, this stuff is, is work. It is actual work for them. They have bosses, they have to report and all of this. They have this organization. So when we are looking at the spirits and the spirits are looking at us, there is this mutual fear, mutual caution, mutual concern. And theirs is justified. You know, and they see us as unworthy. So it's up to us to let that divine essence shine through in every single interaction. You know, a jinn is impatient. It's up to us to be patient. You can't change a jinn, you can change yourself. A jinn is tricky. It's up to us to be honest. A jinn lies, it just does. You know, it just does. It's up to us to be sincere and to catch it when it does and not get mad. Well, so how, how do you, so you mentioned uh, earlier that, um, you know, uh, you have jinn, you know, teachers who are jinns. So how do you, if they lie, then how do you discern between, or, or is it the case, I mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but we know uh, through, you know, in, the, in Islamic cosmology that there are good jinns and there are bad jinns and, you know, uh traditionally it's understood that every person has you know as it were jinns appointed to them and the blessed prophet of islam he said that he made his jinn or jinns muslim so so is it okay so you know i'm just kind of spitballing here so how do you know when these jinns are telling you the truth or not if, if they just if as you say they just lie that's just something they do that's just something they do so, so, so they're tricksters, right? I mean, you know, the word that's used in English, they're, they're tricksters. They like, they like to, to, so is this, is this like, it's kind of fun for them? It's like a joke for no. them? It's not no, a joke. not at all. Uh -huh. Not at all. So how do you know that anyone lies in real life, right? They might have telltale signs. 
But yes. how do you know that someone who doesn't have a body, right? Yeah. You can look at their body language and their tone and everything else. You have to be self-critical. You have yeah. to follow your intuition. Yeah. You have to have a good memory. If a Jin told you something seven years ago, and he tells you something conflicting. Well, you have to have the memory and the presence of spirit to tell him, no, you told me this. So which one is true? Okay. So, so, so can I ask you, how do you communicate? I mean, because I'm sure this is a question that's on, you know, listeners and viewers' minds right now is, so you say you have gym teachers. How do you communicate with them? Like, do, do they, they don't, do they take a physical form? Do they, what is it? Is it something like we see in movies that, that, that there's like a pen? I'm sure it's not like that, but like, instead of, a child a harry potter version would be like a pen moving by itself or something like that that would be um that would that, be too long okay <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. too long and um yeah i mean but it's not through my mind it's not some kind of like you know black mirror or anything like that okay. because all Fair. those things operate on the subconscious mind mm. um, in, in, in Arabic magic, there is actually one true tried and proven method to communicate with them. And I've been blessed to be able to develop that method without going into too many details, but the people who understand will understand. Um, but coming back to your question about being an intermediary, the, um, it's not just about summoning the jinn. You have jinns all around you. It's about doing it the right way and then summon in the right jinn. And then once he gets there, or she, how do you interact with it? See, the jinns, they judge us, right? It's like when you pick up the phone. Someone, how they say, hi, how are you? Or how are you doing today? You know, just their tone, their energy. They judged us. They judge us based on these things, our level of belief, our level of spiritual power. So not everyone can exert the same reaction from a gin. Just like not everyone can, you know, some people, they just walk in the room and they light it up. And other people, they walk in the room and they dim it down, right? It's the same thing. But you have to speak to the jinns in their own language, you know, like kind of a gin legalese, right? And while taking into their in account their own interests, their own propensities, their own perception of things, how they see us. Anyone who says that they have a gin friend, I don't believe that. Friends, you know, they just have too much caution towards us. Can develop a working relationship, a mutually beneficial relationship, but to see that you have a friend, What's wrong with human beings? Did they let you down so much? So going back to being an intermediary, how to work with them. So you've summoned the jinn, then you have to have him work with you and do something for you. Well, what is his motivation? Right? Incense? Come on. People think that they're going to give incense to the jinns. But what did the jinn consume before we were there to burn the incense for them? Is that a question people have already asked themselves who say that you can give incense to a jinn? What did they consume? What did they live on? So all of these things that you don't really need to be well studied. And even if you study all the books in the world, they're not going to answer them for you. And then apart from that, you have to align your work to astronomical movements, which we're going to come to later, um, I'm sure. And you can do all this. You can do all this and still end up on the losing side of the equation because most people end up being manipulated and they end up being controlled by those entities slowly but surely. And then don't give me that Muslim thing. This is a muwakkil. This is a rohani. This is this. This is that. Anyone who's really, really honest with themselves and others will tell you that it's very hard to know the difference. It's very hard. And if a jinn wants to pretend it's an angel, he will pretend it's an angel. Okay? So, I mean, just, just look at the devil. He names himself Lucifer, the bringer of light. The prince of darkness is named the bringer of light. You know? 
this is you you never meet a killer who says hey i kill people for living <laughs> right so you have to know how to deal with those people and more importantly get what you want give them what you, what they want but in this case i'm doing it for clients so these just just how to communicate it most people don't know how to communicate it and the protocol you can summon a gin, do something, say something, and it's going to hit you. Then you're stuck with a gin problem of your own creation. A good portion of the people who come to me for healing, when we do the diagnosis and we look into things, they have actually provoked their own problem by following a, a ritual from a book. And the author didn't know what he was talking about, or it was missing some crucial steps, and they ended up being punished by the gins. So is it worth it? There are unspoken risks. You know, and then you have connections. I know this guy. I know that guy. I know your king. Call him by his king. I know the angel overlooking him that he respects and that he fears and that he serves. So all these things work in our favor to produce a viable atmosphere to accomplish things. And that's when, as I said, Yes, there is an artistic component, but there's definitely a scientific component. So yeah, I see myself as an intermediary, but not only between jinns and people, or jinns, people, and angels. There's a fourth element, which is God. Because God says in his holy book that all magic only works by his permission, in the famous verse about Solomon, and they cannot hurt anyone with it except by God's permission, right? So this, and it's not just me, for Muslim occultists, period, all of them, we understand that any spell you cast, any pact, any result that you get was by permission of God. So people will say, oh, well, what if this person is working with shayateen? They're working with infernal entities. They're hurting people. Why is God allowing that? First of all, to test that person because they're going to get the karma. And then second of all, it was part of that person's belief because if, if you had a good relationship with God and you had that link alive, that magic hasn't touched you. And that's what changed my life. You see, I understood this, that I was suffering for all these years and not just suffering passively, unknowingly. I was seeking a solution, but it's only until I turned to God that I was able to find a permanent solution. So this is very important. It's not just dealing with entities. No, There's someone no. putting the, moving the pieces together. He's the master chess player. Mm. Oh, of course, beautiful, beautiful put. And uh, right, so, so the, the, the challenge became, uh, I mean, it became something that empowered you, right? That this, Right, I mean, what's the Quranic verse that, um, you know, something to the, I'm blanking now, but uh, uh, do, 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 they, do they think that such a, such a thing is, 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 is good for them, but in it is bad, and vice versa, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but in it is good, and God knows, and you know not, right? 